Hey, good afternoon. It's uh, Tuesday, November 15th. And welcome to my uh, channel, Everyday Talks 24-7. Really great to have you, uh, have you here today. Thanks so much for your support, your encouragement. Uh, for those of you who do support the channel financially, so grateful for that. Today, I want to continue talking about the things we need to get rid of. Remember on Sunday, we brought out what Jesus said, if you want to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you want to keep your life, you're going to lose it for his sake. You're going to trust him rather than yourself. And then yesterday we looked at Paul's words of encouragement in Ephesians 4, where he tells us about the stuff we need to get rid of. He says this, you were taught by Jesus with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. In other words, this old pattern, this old way we have of trusting <coughs> our sinful nature we were born with, and now if you're a Christian, that sinful nature has been put away, but the flesh still remains, that battle still remains. And we want to trust those things that are deceitful. We want to trust those things which will pull us away from Christ and keep us protecting ourselves. And that's what we want to do. We want to protect ourselves. And Jesus is saying, Paul is saying, if you want to protect yourself first, you're going to lose your life. It's another way of saying, you know, if you want to save your life, you're going to lose it. If you want to protect your life, you're going to lose it. It doesn't mean you're unprotected. It means that you're trusting God to protect you more than you can. So ultimately, whom do you want to trust? Do you want to trust your own ability to take care of yourself? Or do you want to trust God's ability to care for you? He's the one who's the mighty shepherd warrior with the rod and the staff and the power to change literally any portion of the universe he wants at any time. Power you and I can't even begin to imagine. Power that could take people like you and me, redeem us and make us new. Power that saves us from the pit of hell and gives us the wonder of the joy of heaven the joy of heaven here on earth as we trust God. It's kind of a murky day here in the South Carolina Midlands. Cold, damp, dreary day in the fall. You can see the fog setting in the middle afternoon. And sometimes we feel like we're in the middle of this fog and we can't get out. And we need to trust ourselves. What we're warning, being warned against here is put off your old self, which is being, is being corrupted by deceitful desires. It's being corrupted by desires you can't trust. <clears throat> we can trust God, but we can't trust ourselves. And when we trust ourselves, we are all of a sudden defenseless. So what kind of things do we need to put off? What are you hanging on to? What do I hang on to? that's deceiving us to making us think we're okay. Well, Paul gets amazingly specific for us. In verse 31 of chapter 4, he says, after saying, not grieve, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, rather, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every kind of malice. See, those are the weapons, the tools we use that we think we have to protect ourselves. I think I have to get angry. I think I have to be brutal with someone to get the point. I have to let them know where I stand. I have to let them know you can't do this anymore. So we resort to these ways, but Paul is saying very clearly, get rid of all these things, bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander. The tools that we use to fight back instead of using the weapons of the spirit and trusting that God has more power than you do and than I do. See, it's amazingly practical. 
when we feel pressure, when we feel someone is taking advantage of us, when we feel that someone's doing the wrong thing, we don't resort, according to our flesh, to the things of God. We resort to these familiar tools, these things that need to blow away like the autumn leaves. Stop hanging on to these defense mechanisms of bitterness and rage and anger and letting people have it and standing up for yourself in the wrong way. The best way to stand up for yourself is to clothe yourself in the righteousness of Christ. God is not interested. Jesus is not interested. Jesus did not die so that you would be a doormat and run over by people. Jesus died so that you would have a new victorious life and show people the power of God in humility of trusting God, of believing He can do more than you and I can do to protect ourselves. What are you hanging on to? We're afraid to let go because we think we have to protect ourselves. God has already got us covered. Right here in this word, we have the very tools, the weapons, which is how Paul uses to describe it, the weapons of the Spirit to overcome the weapons of the flesh. Be done with those deceitful, corrupting desires which make us think we can take care of ourselves and embrace the truth of Christ. Don't hang on to that anymore because God can protect you far better than you possibly can. That's where faith comes in. That gentle answer, the pleasant words, the voice of hope rather than the voice of despair, of encouragement. So when someone is struggling, rather than just assume the worst and attack them, try and figure out where they are. Know them. Love them in the right sense so you can understand not how to respond the way that they want you to respond, but to respond in the way that God wants you to respond. Let go of those things. Stop hanging on to those things that are deceiving you and let them go like the fall leaves so that you can know the true righteousness of Christ. No peace and no protection in ways that we never could have imagined. And that's the thought for this day. Thanks so much for being here. Check us out every day, talk247.com. If you haven't subscribed, turn on post notifications. These videos will come right to you. Again, such a blessing to be able to talk with you each day. And Lord willing, We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.